Hello students, it's Mrs. Sorley. We are going to learn in this webcast how to open up files, convert them to DNA, and then be able to blast them. So the files that you would be receiving would be sent from the DNA lab of whichever um, research center you may work in or be interested in, and in this case it's from UW-Madison. So these are actual files. Notice the extension of AB1. When I try to launch the file, the first thing I do is I get a notification that there's no application to open this document. It doesn't know what to do with it. And that's because of that funky AB1 um, extension. So there's some free resources that we can use to turn this extension around to something that I'm going to be able to blast in NCBI. And this is the resources we're going to be using are the same ones that scientists use. So I pulled my screen down just a little bit to show you that I want to launch MEGA. My MEGA is MEGA 7, but with updates, it may turn into 7.1 or MEGA 8. These are free downloads off the internet. It takes just a moment to load. And once it loads, it looks just like this. So what we're going to do is we need to view sequencer files with the parentheses of trace. I found that underneath the align icon. Then you get to load your whatever file you're interested in. And this is just like finding anything on your computer. For instance, if you're looking for a document. Under my RET project, I have some blast practice. I'm going to mine down till I find what I need. And I'm loading a file YHKS364. I want to make sure that I have all files listed because if I do AB1, I see some of them. If I do .scf, I see nothing, but if I do all, I know it, that I have the best chance. So I'm going to open my file, and what I'm opening, the file is actually opening within Mega. At this time, you see some information that you can interpret better by looking at the tutorial that talks about understanding waves in Mega. One of the things we need to be aware of are these ends. Ends are placeholders saying we're not really sure what um, base should be up here, what nucleotide base. So we want to get past those. And I show that I have two ends. Let's just see if I have a bunch more. I don't until after 450. So what I'm going to do is I know that I have about 440 base pairs. That's a lot of um, matching, but we're going to use technology to do that. So I'm going to pull where I know it's clean. I don't get a bunch of ends like this. And even though it's part of the sequence, I'm going to mask that. I don't think that's a good read. And then the, I'm going to go back to the very beginning. And this gets a little squished, so I think I'm going to start right here at the 20 and mask that. Now anything that is not highlighted on the screen is what will be pulled over to be able to switch to a format that we can run a blast with. So it'll start with nucleotide G and it'll go all the way to, what do we go to, 420? So all those uh, base nucleotides will be analyzed. So once we have what we want to use, we're going to use edit, copy, and we're going to choose fast format. I'm going to show you that again. Edit is right here. We're going to copy this into fast format. Just like most programs, you can do things in multi multiple ways, and in this case, you could have also did a control B. Then I can go on the internet, and I actually had NCBI up, and I want to run a blast. So I am going to query blast, and because I've used it so much, it's the first thing that pops up. We're doing a nucleotide blast. I will select that. Now I click into the accession number. We used that when we were working with U94922 or the FASTA sequences, and that's what we're using. When I select that, I'm able to do a control V, and what I have here are all those nucleotides that we spoke of. 
We are looking at yeast. It's not a human. It's not a mouse. It's an other. It's yeast. And instead of highly similar sequences, which is a megablast, we want to do a blast N, which is somewhat similar sequences, and then we can um, maybe find some controversial results. Once I select blast, it takes just a moment to run. And what's happening during this time is it's using scientific and mathematical algorithms to match that sequence that we put in to other um, species in this database. So if it hits it at 100% or 99, 98, 97, we know that that percent of um, nucleotide bases that we put in is a really clean match. We can feel confident that we have found the species that it is. So I'm going to stop this for just a moment while it loads. And I want to remind you of the activity we did with Lego blocks. You just had 10 Lego blocks to match up. And think about the time it took you to do that by hand. And now think of 400 base pairs, or you could consider them Lego blocks to analyze. That's why it takes just a moment. Okay, and this was about as long as I've ever seen it take. It took just about four minutes to get this information. This graph um, I don't find very useful because I have the information down here that I like more. Okay, this is what your screen will look like when the information loads. This uh, means very little to me. I like to go down here by the descriptions. And the first thing I'll see, um, these are a bunch of links. You can see that they're blue and they're underlined. And it tells me about what type of species I may be look at, looking at. And I'll tell you about some of these um, information. First of all, the accession number is what you used when you were exploring U949-2. So it's sort of like a, uh, a book call number or the URL number to a website. It'll bring you right there. But they don't get assigned first. Most times when you're looking for um, information about a species, you're looking at the DNA makeup. So with algorithms, the computer um, database assigned this particular species a max score of 1038. This information tells us what our score was of the DNA that we sent in, and it turned out to be 1,038, which is 100%, meaning my check on it had a 100% match. E values you want as close to zero as possible. 0, 0.0 is it. And the ident value is something I look at right away. My eyes go right here right away. Because unless it's 100, 99, or 98, it, um, it's less convincing that I have found the species that I'm looking for. If I look here, there's a whole bunch of 100s, but I also see something in common here. Telespora delbruchii keeps showing up again and again. If I want to know more about that, I can choose the accession number, and I'll find out if there's any publications about it. And it looks like there is. PubMed has one. This was actually authored by the research lab at UW-Madison, the Hittinger Labs. Um, I can find out more about the species, just like we did when we were researching U949-2. Using my back browser icon, or excuse me, arrow, I was able to double check my DNA and find other information as I needed. That's it. That's how you convert the file so you can use it in um, NCBI's BLAST and find out some information from, for that. And as always, my advice to you is drink milk, read books.